What's up, YouTube fam? I want to share with you guys a very, very special video. It's going to be the last comp video that you ever watch. All right. This video is my special charged up as is comp method. It's a way that I've been doing comps for years. It simplifies the process for you very, very much so that while you're speaking with sellers live on the phone, you're going to be able to quickly assess a property within 60, 90 seconds and formulate your offer to use with that seller live right then and there on the phone. No more worrying about 70% of ARV. There's no more, what are the repair costs? Do I need to go out and take a look at it? Guys, this is how we're doing deals every single day right over the phone for years using this exact method. I wanna share it with you. I want you guys to understand how to do it. I've had this video tucked away in the vault for about a year. The only place that it's been is in my free Facebook group, Wholesaling Houses Supercharged. But I wanna share it with you guys. I want everybody to get their hands on it. When you're moving forward, if you see somebody in a forum or a Facebook group, or you have a friend and people are trying to figure out, hey, how do I run a comp? How do I know what to come up with my offer? How do I do this? How do I do that? Guys, all you gotta do is share this video with them. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the ring thing, I think, the bell. So anytime I go live, anytime I drop a new video, you get notified about it. We wanna talk about comps today. Uh, hopefully everybody can see my screen fine without any issue. All right, so I'm just gonna go over how I comp uh, different properties. I see a lot of wholesalers talk about, you know, how do you comp, uh, you know, Chris, I got a property, what's the value of it? You know, things of that nature. So we kind of just want to go over that really quickly. I want to show you guys exactly how I do that myself. And uh, I think that'll help you guys as far as your business in terms of uh, how to look at comps. I, pre I prefer to look at comps in a really tight window. Um, a lot of people try to start wide out, you know, things of that nature. I try to focus specifically on um, the property and the neighborhood itself before I kind of venture out. So uh, LaPortia gave me an address that I'm going to throw in here. Uh, that we'll take we'll all take a look at together if you're not familiar with prop stream by the way i'm going to be talking more about prop stream in the near future uh, it's a really cool tool uh, that i like a lot you can do a lot of different things with it uh, you can get lists um, you can find cash buyers uh, properties in auction foreclosures properties with liens high equity properties that are vacant so it's a really cool uh, tool that i like to use a lot here's the deal with comps guys so the problem that everybody has with comps is you really can make comps like anything that you want to right, do. Sorry guys. Right? So to make sure the we important, the important part straight. the important part when you're doing comps is you, you don't want to trick yourself in terms of what the property value is. All right. So we're looking at this property that LaPorsche has. If you have a property that you want to look at uh, and talk about while we're on this live, uh, drop it in the comments. And uh, Mark, if you're listening, if you can text it to me. That, that since I can't see the live uh, comments itself, that helped me out. So like right now, we're looking at 1565 Montpelier Street, Petersburg, Virginia, if everybody can see that. So while we're in prop stream, we're gonna put the address in obviously right here. That's gonna bring up this page. Uh, and then to get the comps, you know, so it's got a kind of auto-populated average comps piece right here, uh, which is great. We don't necessarily need that right this second. All right, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and hit on details. It's gonna bring up more information about the property itself. So what we can kind of immediately see is it looks like the property is owned free and clear. I look, I like to look in the opportunity section here on PropStream. So it's gonna show mortgage balance. Right now it says not available, uh, there's no liens. We're gonna assume that the person owns the property free and clear. We don't necessarily know that, but we're gonna use that as an assumption. Uh, we're also gonna look at the occupancy and see that the property is vacant or showing is vacant here. All right, so um, we're gonna look at the tax information. All right, this is always gonna be, uh, in my opinion, extremely popular thing to look at. A lot of people, sellers that you're gonna end up talking to, they derive what they think their property is worth based on uh, the assessed value. So I like to see what that is, to kind of know what I'm up against when I'm talking to a seller, uh, and if we're even kind of even in the same ballpark or we're going to be realistic or at least when they say hey i want tax assessment i'm already kind of familiar with what that is you can look at the mortgage history we see that there's no mortgage that's been on the property um, so it looks like we might be dealing with uh, possibly an original owner because uh, i don't see where uh, it says it was built in 53 there's no previous transactions there's no mortgage on the property uh, so he's probably likely been the owner uh, potentially the entire time so all right, we're in prop share. We're going to click on comparables and nearby listings. 
All right, so immediately it's you know just a pre settings on uh, prop stream, which is not really anything. It's going to pull up one comp here, right? Uh, and I've got it right now set at 0 0.05 or 0 0.5, so uh, half a mile out. I like to start my comps at a quarter mile, so we're going to change that to 0.25. All right, we're going to start with a year range. I prefer six months. Uh, but for the sake of this, we're going to use a year. Uh, but you can certainly change this from being a range of a year. I like to start at six months. All right, now we're just going to start trying to plug in some data. So when we take a look at this, <clears throat> um, all right, we can see the property right here says that it's 1,575 square feet. All right, so I base all my comps off a simple rule, which is what I call the 20% rule, right? So we're going to take 1,575, and we're going to multiply that by 20%. All right, so that's 315. Uh, so 20% up or down, so plus or minus. And understand, we're trying to develop a range of square feet that we can use to pull our comps, okay? So we're going to take that 315, and we're going to deduct it from the 1,575. So that's going to be 1,260 square feet. So we're going to stick that here. It's going to be our base range. All right, and then we're going to go back that 1,575. We're going to now add the 315 to it. All right, so that's going to mean that we need to, to add 472 square feet. All right. One second. So 1,575 plus 315 square feet is going to be 1,890 square feet. So this is going to be the range that we want to use uh, for our comps. All right, so one thing that we can immediately see on this property is that it's not showing any comps at all. So it's never really a good thing. All right, so when you, we're in a situation where you got a property that doesn't show any comps at all, once you kind of narrow this criteria alone. Uh, so you see we have everything else open up. We've got year built open up. We've got bedrooms opened up. Uh, we've got bathrooms opened up, uh, subdivision. So the only thing we've really made an adjustment to right this second is the distance and the uh, square footage, okay? And so just by doing that, uh, we already see that uh, there's no comp. So we wanna widen this out. So we're gonna go back to a half mile. All right, so you guys see when we do that, it gives us uh, one comp, right? Uh, so we see that, but that's not necessarily uh, a good thing for us. We always wanna have more comps uh, than we need. So now we can go to 0.75. We still only have one comp. All right, or we can go out to a full mile. Now we've got two comps when we go out to a full mile. All right, so you can look at the distance tab right here. It's going to tell you how far out each property is. All right, so we can see that this one is 0.3 miles away from the subject property. So this property right here, this particular comp is uh, 0.3 miles away. So I think that's a pretty good comp. We're going to look at the square footage. We're inside of our 20% range, so that's 1,575. The square footage on this one is 1,676, so it falls in between our 20%. All right, the reason that we like using the 20% rule is this is a base rule that appraisers use. All right, so when you're going to resell your properties, if you're flipping or you're selling it to an end buyer that's looking to flip, you want to use a 20% rule because we want to make sure we're getting an accurate representation of what the property is actually worth, either as it is right this second or what it's worth uh, once it's fixed up. All right. So we've got another comp right here for 139,900. So we see what? We see that both of these are three twos, even though the size difference varies. We see these were both built roughly around the same time. All right. Uh, and then we also see right here that uh, this particular property is uh, built in 1953 as well. So our subject property is built in 1953. So we can easily kind of look at all three of these. So our subject property and these additional two properties, and we can kind of reasonably say, if we're seeing a one comp for 145 and another comp for 140, I'd be comfortable saying this property also at a three two, this 1500 square feet, so kind of in between this, is going to be worth 140 to 145. All right, guys, if you if you understand how I just explained this particular comp, um, drop a, another Y for me in the 
uh, in the comments on this uh, so that this I know this is kind of making sense for you guys if you don't understand what I said and how we kind of came up with this that's okay we can go back over it drop a drop a no or put it in uh, in the comment section for me all right so I'm gonna hang tight and let a couple people do that so we can kind of see Again, guys, drop a Y if it makes sense how we just pulled that comp. Um, if you if and don't, this isn't a group where if you need help or you don't get something the first time, you got to feel bad about asking again, right? That's not why we put this together. So, if we're going over something that doesn't make complete sense to you, and you want to revisit it or we want to talk about it again, just drop the just drop the in 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 the comments and we can we can circle back to it again. Uh, and make sure that we got it right. All right. So I'm going to use a different property that somebody sent to us. We're going to go over that one. So we've got uh, 716 Cabin Creek out in Hopewell. <clears throat> Y'all like these far out deals, don't you? All right. So we're going to pull this one up, right? So we're looking at uh, 716 Cabin Creek. So we'll take a quick quick little look at the property. Again, we see the estimated value is 133. Uh, there's no liens uh, on the property uh, as well. All right, and so again, the first stuff that we wanna look at is what's right here in bold. So we see that it's four bedrooms. We know that it's two bathrooms and it's only 1,008 square feet. All right, it was built in 1985. Uh, so that's pretty small for four bedrooms and, and two baths. So we're, we're gonna need to dig into that a little bit and see, uh, you know, uh, is this accurate? Is it possible that um, looks like this might be a tri level, right? So sometimes on tri levels, this lower room right here where my mouse is at, sometimes the tax office won't fully count this as square footage. Uh, that doesn't mean that when you list a property, it's not counted. Typically, it is going to be counted, but the county could potentially just have it wrong. So that's going to be something that we'll look into uh, on the tax section here. Um, uh, in a second. So I just see a comment that just came in on my phone. So uh, Ra Raul Fernandez says, how did you get to 1890 again? The 20% rule. So let me make sure I'm, I'm explaining the 20% rule right. So the 20% rule, guys, is you're going to take the base square footage. I'm going to do it on the screen for you so it makes sense. That's probably easier. So we're going to take this particular property, Raul. We're going to say 1,008 square feet. All right, and then we're going to go here, and we're going to multiply that by 20%. So that, that's a difference of 201 square feet. All right, so what we want to do is we go back, we put our 1,008 in, and then we want to deduct, what was it, what did I say, 201 square feet, I think. Let's just use 201, All right? So that's 807 square feet. So that 807 comes into play. We'll click details here in prop stream we're going to go here to comparables and nearby listings so that means what was that 807 so that means we want to start our square footage at 807 all right that's our bottom range we know that this says that it's a thousand eight square feet but this is our bottom range all right so now to get the max for our range we're just going to do the exact same thing again so we're going to say a thousand eight thousand eight all right, we're going to multiply that by 20%. All right, that's 201. So we're going to go back and put in 1,008, and now we're going to add in the 201. So the first time we took it away to get the base range, so we took the 20% off of the 1,008 square feet. Now we're adding it to get the max on the range. That's going to put us at 1,209 square feet. All right, so we said we want to start always at, at point uh, 25. We don't see any comps right now at 0.25. We've established our square footage range. Uh, so let's let's look into the tax information uh, really quickly. All right, Roa, I see your comment, Roa. I'm glad that that made sense. Um, all right, so we're going to look at the tax information. Looks like this is a an investor owner right now. All right, so we, we kind of already see that. Um, you know, we see the tax assessments. Not really anything uh, particular to look at right there. Um, so we can tell just by looking at this, this is a, uh, an investor loan for sure. So 
Uh, they got a loan from Essex Bank. It looks like it's a variable rate mortgage. All right, so they got a loan for 85000 and they did that back in 2015. So we can take that, look right here at the mortgage balance, and we can see $78,733 $733 is the estimated balance left on that mortgage. Um, Nick uh, P., I think this, uh, this, this one came from you. So the, the thing you got to understand, Nick, when you look at this, all right, and this is why I like PropStream a lot, and I'm going to be talking a lot about it inside of this group, is you got to understand that the mortgage balance, guys, is a tool that we can take to negotiate, all right? So now when I'm talking to a seller, and that seller says, well, I want uh, 95000 Well, why is he saying 95000 Right? Is he saying it because that's the tax assessment? Nah, because the tax assessment's 142. Right? So maybe he's not basing it on that. Maybe he really wants to sell and he is motivated, but he's trying to make sure that he can pay off his mortgage balance. All right? And what you can do, kind of a ninja tactic I like to use with PropStream, is we can kind of easily get an idea of what his remaining mortgage balance is. So now when I'm negotiating with him, he doesn't know that I know this. All right? So now when I'm negotiating with the guy, it gives me a real opportunity to kind of use that to my advantage uh, to push him uh, to the number I want. Or I have the ability to know what his bottom line is, right? So in my head, I can say, hey, well, I know the guy's bottom line is probably going to be around 80 grand. Like at the end of the day, push come to shove if you can't do anything. And then the other reality is going to end up being, well, now I can use it as a negotiation tool because I want to make sure I'm talking to my seller that I'm, I'm, I want him to be able to walk away with some money, right? So if I've got some room on what I can make on this offer and we're going to look and find out, all right, now I'm having a conversation and saying, whoever is Cosmo and LLC, now I'm saying, hey, look, you know, I think I can come to about, you know, I know you're at 95. I really need to be at 87. But look, I want to pay all the closing costs for you so we can go ahead and move this deal forward. Is that something that could work for you? Right. By doing that, I'm, I'm leveraging against what I know his mortgage balance to be. But I know that even if even though he's highly motivated, wants to get out of the property, at 87, that's still going to put a little bit of money in his pocket. Um, and there's nothing wrong with trying to make sure that your sellers make some money, too. We always want to make money, obviously, but we don't want our sellers to not make any money at all. So uh, this one is a good deal in terms of inside of PropStream. Have the ability where we can click on it and see some pictures of the property. This is particularly good for wholesale guys. All right. So we can look at this and kind of see already. Um, it's not in bad shape. Now, we don't know when these pictures were pulled from. We don't know if it was pulled from the MLS at some point, if it was pulled from Zillow or a rental listing. So we don't know if it's in the exact condition right now. But, but one thing we can at least say is that even if the property is in some sort of disrepair, uh, it's probably not in terrible shape. Right? It's not like it's like a full, uh, full gut job or, or something like that. Right? So... Uh, that, that's why it's important to kind of take a look at the pictures. You want to know what the pictures look like, right? Because, and again, especially in hotels, but even on a wholesale deal itself, it's extremely important because you're, ba you're going to base your comps off of what that property looks like. So when we start to look at comps and, you know, what the value of the comps are, once we look at some of the comps and look at some pictures of the comps, then that gives us the ability to know, are we really in line with value? Right when it comes to that. So let's back this out from 0.25 and let's go to a half mile and see if we get anything. So we got four comps. All right. So uh, we're inside of our range, our square foot range right here. Hey guys, if this is helpful, you know, by the way, let me know. Um, hit, hit the like button um, or hit the heart button. Um, if you guys tap that, it'll let me know because I can't talk to you guys while I'm on here. So to let me know if this information I'm giving you is helpful. Um, and, and, and how deep it kind of keep going. So um, hit the like button, hit the hit the love button, um, and uh, let's keep going. And I want to make sure I'm helping you guys out here. So we got four comps that, come, that came up. All right, we see this property was built in 1985. All right, so we see one comp right here. All right, this is, I'm glad this popped up. So we see a comp that was, is from 2012. All right, this isn't really a comp for me. All right, so I'm not even really paying attention to this one. The reason I'm not paying attention to it, all right, is because it's built, it's, it's a new house, right? So we know that somebody at some point built this. So typically it's not going to be anywhere in line uh, with, with anything else in the neighborhood that we're really kind of looking at, all right? So um, we're looking at this, and I think this was Nick's deal. 
All right, so we know that we've got four bedrooms and two baths. So generally first, we wanna look at any property that has four bedrooms and two baths. So we've got uh, two comps right here that are gonna to apply to that, all right? So we've got one that went for 186, we got one that went for 162, all right? So obviously the one with the two baths, even though it was a little smaller, if you look at the square feet where I've got my mouse cursor, we at least are able to see uh, the, the, the second bath probably gave this one a little bit more value. They sold it around the exact same time. Here's what's important, right? If you look at the distance, we see this is actually closer to the property than the, the, the smaller comp. All right, so that's always a good thing that we like to take a look at. All right, so now let's go out to 0.75 and see what we kind of get uh, with that. So now we've got six comps instead of four. And again, guys, I just want to emphasize, you want to start as tight in as possible to the property as you can. That's why we start at 0.25 all the time, because we, we want to be right up on that thing. We want to be on top of the property and kind of that direct vicinity uh, as we chart, as we start to come up with our value. And now we can kind of back out. So we've kind of got a baseline. Uh, and let me just go back and show that. I don't think we had anything come up at 0.25. Yeah, so we, we, we our big comps, our real comps kind of started uh, right here. So my right now, my base value on this property is going to be in that 185 range, okay? So if we look at this one particular property right here, all right, so we see this one doesn't have any uh, any uh, any pictures, right? All right, so I like Street View a lot because what Street View allows us to be able to do is we want to see if it's the same type of neighborhood. So we've already we're already looking at what this house looks like. We can see that right here, right? So as we look at this here, just from street view, we can kind of say, all right, yeah, that's probably a newer style house. We can see that it's got an upgrade here in the driveway. So somebody's got a larger shed out back. We don't have that on our subject property, so it's important to know that, right? And so we do see this as kind of a newer property uh, or it's been renovated. We're just taking a, a, a wide guess just from looking at a bird's eye view. All right, but I don't, I don't know that it's too uh, unreasonable to say that. We can see that it looks like it's a pretty good property. But what we can also see is that it's, it's mixed in here in this neighborhood. Well, these, these houses all kind of look like our sub subject property, all right? These are houses that were built in the 60s, 70s, 80s, that kind of thing. We see that style, so we kind of know that's what we're looking at. Um, but we can tell that this is somebody, just from looking at this, this right here, right? This is somebody that takes good care of their property, it uh, looks like it's fenced in, so we, they've spent some money there. Uh, roof from a bird's eye view looks in decent shape. Um, all right, here's 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 a gem for you guys. We can also see they've got a paved driveway. All right, that's something we want to pick up on. Okay, so this driveway is paved. We got a partial paved driveway here and here. Uh, we've got this one that isn't paved. It just tells us this is a house that somebody's taking good care of. We can't see the inside of it, but for the sake of our comps, we want to get a, a decent idea of what the condition is. But kind of like we said on this one, when we look at these photos, I mean, this one is in pretty pretty solid shape, right? Somebody's renovated this uh, at some point, right? All right, so now that we've got these details, we know our kind of baseline is, let's just call it 185. So now we're gonna go out a little bit further where we got six comps instead of four. All right, so uh, we still got our top comp right here that we like a lot, all right? Uh, we've got this other one here that's 0.4 miles away. Uh, that's the other one that was at the 162. Uh, we see one right here, all right, uh, for 109. Uh, and so that's, you know, we don't know what that condition is, but that's not probably ideal for us. It looks like it's probably a property that needed some work. Let's see if it has any pictures. So there's no pictures here, but it looks like it, it definitely probably needed some work. Um, Looks like somebody got foreclosed on it is what it looks like. Um, so that's just, you know, well, that is what it is. But this one sold for 109, so that's not really a comp that we want to use because our property is in pretty good condition, all right? Um, so now we're looking at this here, and these are our additional two comps, guys. All right, so this is going a little bit farther out. So we've got one for 165. Uh, we've got another one here for 112. Now these are both three bedrooms, all right? Uh, kind of similar square footage, but not the exact same. This one's got small square footage, but we've got the four bedrooms. 
So on this, I'm going to be comfortable using the 185 as a comp. Now, for wholesaling purposes, I know I've talked a lot about wholesaling, guys. You've got a lot of questions about wholesaling in itself. Now, when it comes to wholesaling, I'm not going to try to wholesale this for 185. All right. The, the trick on the wholesaling is you, you want to get it at a price. If that's what the house looks like, Nick, on the inside right now, the, the way the pictures look are reasonably close to that. You can't wholesale it for 185. The point of doing a wholesale when you're selling it to a retail buyer is you want them to walk into a little bit of equity. You want them to feel like they're getting a discount, so to speak, for buying a property as is. So I'd likely be looking at putting this property out at 155 to 160. Now, when this becomes a really good wholesale situation, is if I can pick this up, uh, this property, if I can pick it up for close to 100 grand, that really gives me an opportunity at that point. Um, to pick it up from around 100 grand, now I know I've got about $50,000 in spread without doing any work to it. All right, so now I know I can borrow on that money. Let's say the money cost me uh, $5,000 to borrow 100,000. Okay, so I know that I can borrow that 100,000 uh, for just a couple of months, purchase the property. Now I can put on the market at 155, and I'm walking away after expenses with probably, you know, let's just say 40 grand. All right. If we account 15,000 expenses, which is pretty generous, we're going to walk away with 40 grand uh, on a wholesale deal. That's without talking to a contractor. That's without doing any type of work. That's just from coming in and digging into the comps uh, in a good way and figuring out exactly uh, what we can do and what the market looks like in that area. But you got to look at the market up close and then you got to start to back out. All right. So we started up close. I uh, didn't see anything specifically until we got to a uh, half mile out. But now we know, like, shit, like, this property is in pretty solid condition. So this, is, this, is, this looks like a good deal. We don't know what, what Nick has it under contract for. But if he's got it under contract for 100 grand or even 110 grand, right, it's a pretty solid wholesale deal that he can really kind of use here. Because uh, somebody's going to be able to buy this property. An end buyer, end retail buyer is going to be able to buy this property. Uh, walk into it knowing that it's worth 185. They're getting it for 155. So you're getting, what, $30,000 in equity? So somebody looking for a house, guys, that's going to be pretty important to them, all right? Um, so that's why I really like these deals. Um, all right, so I'm going to jump into another one that we've got uh, that somebody wants to comp. All right, give me one second. Let me pull up another uh, another address we got. All right, my man Marcus sent me an address. Let's see what we get on this one. All right, so we're going to pull this up. All right, and so we got 104 Wickham. So again, all right, so we see the estimated value. We're looking at that first each time. We see that's 258. We see the estimated equity. We're going to check on that in a second. Three bedrooms, two baths. Built in 1910, so this is an old house. Uh, either it's either it has never been renovated, it's in really bad shape, and it's a full gut, right? I know this area pretty well, so it could be a full gut, uh, or potentially uh, it's been renovated over the years, right? The problem with renovations over the years, we never know what quality uh, renovation ever has ever happened to the property, things of that nature. So uh, we want to look into this one, kind of see what we get. So we're going to click on details. All right, we're looking at the opportunity section, guys, in PropStream. So we're looking at that and we're saying, all right, the estimated mortgage balance is 124. All right. Now, what I know is that this is a full gut, okay, for that area and the mortgage balance is 124. And he can't sell it to me for less than 124. I'm sorry, she, Pamela, can't sell it to me for less than 124. All right, well, you know, that, that's probably about what I could sell it for myself probably a little bit more if it's a full gut I probably could sell it for less uh, but let's let's kind of look into it and see what we can find out so we see that uh, Pamela's owned it for a while all right she picked it up originally had a loan for 104,000 it looks like she's refinanced it over the years we all remember 2007 that's right before the market tended to uh, to kind of tail off all right so uh, she probably refinanced it for 130,000 and then again in 08 um, 454000 all right? So um, since 08, it looks like she's probably paid it down. We're estimating uh, down to about 124000 all right? 
And again, guys, if you got address that you want to go over, I want to go over a couple of them. Drop them in the comments uh, so that we can talk about them and go over them. And uh, if you've got property that you've been looking at or you got a lead uh, that, that has come in or you got something under contract, you're not sure if it's a good deal or not, drop, drop the address in the comments, all right, or uh, private message it to Mark Whiting. And we'll go over it here uh, right now on this live so you can kind of get an idea of how you should be pulling that comp. All right. So we're looking at all this information. You know, we see the mortgages that she's taken out on it. Uh, tax assessed, uh, 199000 All right. So let's kind of dig into the comparables uh, and kind of see what we got. Guys, this is something I like a lot in PropStream. All right. If this is helping you guys, again, uh, hit the like button for me uh, so that I know we, we keep going. So uh, I like the MLS details tab here in PropStream because it'll, it'll pull me direct MLS data. And this is especially powerful for you folks who do not have MLS access. All right, I have MLS access, but I use PropStream because it, it's nationwide, it's not restricted to just Central Virginia. So I can look at deals all over the US right now uh, with the power of PropStream, all right? So I'm looking at this MLS tab and it gives me an idea of, all right, so I see automatically Marcus's property was listed back in April. Um, it's been on the market for 175, 173 days, so it's still on the market. All right, so they listed it for 269. Uh, well, obviously that's crazy because, uh, and that's why it's been <laughs> sitting on the market for 173 days because that's just not a workable uh, number. Um, you even get the agent information down here on the MLS tab, which I like a lot. So if you want to make an offer on this, you don't have to try to find your own agent or anything like that. I'm gonna give you guys a very simple gem. All right, no offense to any realtor listening to this right now or in the future. Realtors love commission. I promise you, realtors love commission, okay? I would call Debbie, all right, and I would call Debbie if this was a deal, all right? It doesn't like it's a deal, but we're going to go all the way through it. I'd call Debbie and literally say, hey, Debbie, I'm interested in putting an offer on the property that you have listed over there at 104 Wickham Street in Richmond, Virginia. Have you gotten any offers on the property yet? I know that you've had it listed on the market for 173 days. You guys haven't been able to sell it yet. I'm sure your seller wants to sell the property. What do you really need to be at to try to get a deal done? All right. Debbie's going to say, well, just make an offer. I'll take it to my seller. All right. Or she's going to say, hey, Chris, well, do you have a realtor already that you're working with? Hey, Debbie, listen, I'm trying to work with you. All right. I know that you have the listing. I know you're familiar already with the seller. You and the seller already have a relationship. I'm really interested in purchasing the property. I think it's a bit overpriced. Do you think your seller would be receptive to a lower offer? Give give her an opportunity to answer on that, right? She's going to give you an answer. We don't know what that answer would be, but let's just assume that she says that her seller would be open uh, to a lower offer. Now, we're not talking to Debbie about what the possible mortgage balance would, uh, is or anything like that. Uh, talking to a realtor directly that's representing a seller is a lot different than talking to a seller directly, all right? So we're going to go back to that comparables and nearby listings tab so we can pull some comps. I know this area, it's a tight, tight area. It's very block to block. Um, I, I own property in this area and I've sold a bunch of houses in this area. Um, you can go three blocks over and have a $500,000 house. Um, so we're got, we got to really kind of tighten these comps. It's a good one to use. So uh, let's go in a quarter mile. I'm sure that'll pull something up for us. All right, so we're already at 27 comps. So we've got to really kind of tighten up our square footage uh, and some other things. So um, what, here, here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to pull up uh, the calculator again. So we're going to say 2,176 square feet. We're going to use our 20% rule, guys. That never changes. I don't care if you're dealing with a $500,000 house or a $50,000 house. We always want to use that 20% 20, 20 square foot uh, range. All right, um, so we're going to do this again. So we're going to take 2,176. We're going to multiply that by 20%. So it gives us a range of 435. All right, so let's get our base range. We're going to take 435 away from that. It's going to be 2,141. All right, and we're just going to do the same thing again. All right, so then we're going to say 2,176. They're going to add 435. All right, and so that's going to be 2,611 square feet. All right, so we're going to take that. 
All right, so now we've kind of got a range that we want to use inside of that 20%. So we got 2,141, uh, we got 2,611. All right, so we've tightened that up a little bit. We've taken it down from 27 comps, all right, to six. I want you to, I really want to make sure you guys understand what we just did. All right, by tightening up the square footage and really getting in line with where we really need to be realistically uh, in terms of finding a comp for this property so we can figure out what it's worth, all right? But by being true to numbers, data and, and numbers are everything in real estate, all right? We've tightened the comps up from 2,141 square feet to 2,611 square feet. That took us down from 27 comps to six. So that what that tells me is that I know that we're getting down to the bottom of it. I know that we're getting to really figure out what this thing is worth. All right. So if we want to tighten this up further, we're going to want to look at the bathrooms again, bed and bath. All right. So this is a three, two. Now what we want to know, all right. And, and this is something you guys got to know as you look at property. All right. I've bought and sold a lot of properties over the years. I've built houses from the ground up. So this may be easier for me, but I had to learn this all at one point in, in terms of what I'm about to say. You've got to know that you can look at a 2,176 square foot house and you've got to know that you could add a bedroom and bathroom to that most likely. OK, put in perspective, the last comp that we just did, all right, the address that Marcus had, that house had four bedrooms and two bathrooms. It was only a thousand and eight square feet. So that means we've got a full uh, additional a uh, little over a thousand extra square feet when we look at this comp. This is only a three two. I, I want to make sure you guys understand this and, and are catching this. So, uh, again, hit the like button if that makes sense. I want to make sure you guys know what I'm saying. So, we know when we go look at our comps, it's likely if we come, if we're going to renovate this, it's likely we can get it up from three bedrooms to four and either keep it at two bathrooms or at least make it a two and a half. Like, we just know that based on square feet. It's important to know what the square feet, uh, square footage is in your area and what fits inside of that. All right. We don't want to get lost in what can fit inside of that. OK, so we're going to we're going to utilize my point in telling you all that is we're going to utilize uh, some of these comps that have four bedrooms. All right. Because we know that's what can work in that area. The square feet is similar. It falls inside of our 20 percent range. So it's reasonable to say that it could be worth X. All right. If we put another bathroom in it or another bedroom in it, all right? Now, this is kind of a two-for-one, guys. This is going to be a, a pretty decent gem. Um, I'm going to give you guys some game right here. So what you can do, all right, so I love wholesaling, all right? And this applies for wholesaling too, guys. Anytime I say wholesaling, it applies the same thought or concept applies to wholesaling. I can look at my first comp on Rose Ave, all right? And I know, man, like this one just sold for 145. It's a three, one and a half. It's 2,200 square feet. It's super tight and close. All right. It's built 1,900. This is built 1,910. I can look at this and know that I can wholesale my property for around 145. I can, I can know that. All right. Here's the problem with a lot of people. Everyone's been taught, and I hate this, but everybody's been taught What's the ARV? How many repairs? Yada, yada, yada. I had this conversation with somebody last night at a, uh, at a RIA event. Okay. It doesn't really matter. It does, it does not matter what the repairs are needed to the property. You're not going to repair it. So why do you care? All right. You're trying to wholesale it or wholesale it. All right. So we don't really care about the repairs. I don't look at repairs. I don't go, I, I don't go to houses and say, how much is the AC cost? How much is the roof? Doesn't matter. I don't know what my end buyer is even going to do with it. I don't know what he's going to renovate. I could be selling to a slumlord. I could be selling to a retail buyer that wants to fix it up and move into it. I could be selling it to a builder, wants to knock it down. I don't know. So I'm not going to base my profitability on what I think somebody else might do to it. Doesn't make any sense. All right. So I know right now that I can sell this for 145. All right. I feel pretty confident about that for sure. So I could say, hey, I can I can buy this and wholesale it, put it on the market for 145 or I can wholesale it in that 145 range. So what's important about that, if I want to wholesale it, I'm literally just going to do this. All right. I want to say 145,000. Boom. I know that I can wholesale this for 145,000. 
This is 0.1 miles away. So this is right up on uh, our, our property uh, right here on Wickham Street. All right. So now I can just take away from that 145000 it can go for what I want to make. And I'm trying to formulate my offer to the seller, guys. All right. So I can say, I don't got to be greedy. You know, I need some new shoes. So I want to, I'm going to say I want to make 15000 All right. So that's going to take me down to 130000 so not right now, I know my max offer. I don't need a special fancy calculator. I don't, you know, I don't need all these crazy Excel spreadsheets where put this number in, put that number in, da 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 da. Nah, like I, I know the neighborhood. All right, I I know that this comp is right up on my subject property. It's right there. All right, so I know my max offer. All right. Is 130,000. 130, Here's the gym. That's why I fucking love Prostream. I can go back and look at that mortgage balance. All right, he's roughly going to owe, Pamela roughly owes 125. All right, what did I just say for me to make 15,000? I need to be at, I need to be at 130,000. I hope you guys are catching this. Uh, hit the like button if you're catching what I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you. All right, because this is a true, true gym. All right. So I know for me to make my 15 grand, I know I can sell it at 145, right? So I know that for me, to me to make my 15, I got to get to 130. Well, 130 also takes care of Pamela, all right? So if I'm at 130, I'm paying off Pamela's mortgage. She's a motivated seller. She, Chris, I just want to walk away. I'm tired of the property. I don't want to, my little cousin's been living in it. He has never paid rent. Yada, 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 yada. Pamela, you know what? I can certainly understand. Tenants can always be a problem. It's just part of the business, something we've got to deal with. I, I know it could be a hassle if you're not, you know, uh, a landlord or dealing with a bunch of properties. It can be a headache, especially dealing with family members sometimes. I know how that is. Look, I, I want to try to help you here. Where I can where I can be at comfortably to get this deal done is I can be at 115. All right, I can do 115,000. Pamela's gonna say, Chris, you're crazy. I'm not selling to you for 115. We buy ugly houses just came last week and they told me they could give me more than that. Da, 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 da. Okay, Pamela, I get it. I get it. All right. But I know where I gotta go. I know where I'm I know what I'm working against. I'm working against she owes 125. And I'm working against I want to make 15. So my cap out is gonna be 130. All right. So if I'm at 115, I'm gonna negotiate with Pamela a little bit. I'm gonna use that 115. I'm trying to get an asking price from her. All right. Well, Pamela, look, I understand you can't do 115. I really want to make a deal work with you. I like creating win-win situations. I don't want to be the only person that makes money here, but look, this is how I take care of my family, right? This is all I do for a living. So if you can't do 115, if I was willing to write, it, write an offer with you today, put it on paper, what's a comfortable number that you need to be at uh, to feel that uh, you're getting what you need, right? Now, we don't know what her motivation is. We don't know if she... Uh, only cares about the 125 and she feels that it's more than that because the tax assessment is 199 so maybe she's asking for 199 we don't know right uh but this is why it's also important to sit down and educate your uh, sellers on what a property is worth what the comps look like and that'll be a different live we'll kind of deep dive into that but uh, you got to be able to, to uh, articulate this stuff to your sellers right now my whole point is if, as long as i can get her to that 130 I'm making 115. All right. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm making 15,000. Now, if she goes to 135, I'm still assigning it and making 10. All right. So uh, that's the beautiful part about it. We can just kind of play with that, but we're not going crazy about how much somebody's got to put into it. What's the ARV? Uh, what's 70% of the ARV? And da 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 da. That's the old school way of thinking. That the let, let me tell you guys something. I'm going to be very frank. All right. I'm a buyer in my market. I buy a lot of properties. I've, been, I've bought hundreds of properties over the years. All right. I'm going to be very candid with you. All right. The only reason that any buyer, and I've bought plenty of deals from wholesalers. All right. The only reason any buyer is asking you <laughs> what the repair cost is, is so they can negotiate your profit down. All right. You do not work for the rehabber. You do not work for the end buyer. They work for themselves just like you work for yourself. Figure out your own number. What happens is you don't have confidence in how you come up with your number. And as a result, 
you're looking for some second voice and a lot of times your buyer you're looking for somebody to come in and say oh yeah chris that sounds like a reasonable price no nah, i know what a reasonable price is i don't give a shit what you got to come put in the property to fix it up or you know all these different things i know what it's worth i know somebody less than a year ago was willing to pay 145 for a very similar property so i can i can assume safely that this property is worth about $145,000. What you're going to do with it from here after I sell it to you ain't got shit to do with me. All right. Again, I don't know if you're going to rent it out. I don't know if you're going to turn it into a boarding house. I don't know if you're going to make it a group home. I don't know if you're going to make it to Taj Mahal. I have no idea. So why would I run my business based on what I think you might do with it? It doesn't make any sense. All right. I'm only going to look at data and what I know something to be. Again, I confidently know property's worth 145000 as is. If I want to make 15000 I need to get it for 130000 It's that simple, all right? I'm just working against the 145000 Now let's Now, let's flip it. We're going to flip it. Now, let's look at what it could be worth um, outside of that, all right? So at 0.25, again, which is pretty safe and tight in on this type of property, we know that because of the square footage, like we talked about earlier, we could likely increase um, increase this, this property from a three-bedroom to a four-bedroom, okay? So I'm looking at those. This one likely sold as is, all right? We can tell that just simply by the purchase price. This likely sold as is, all right? Here's a trick, guys. Here's a gem. Here's some game. This is the comp that you show your seller, okay? You show your seller, hey, Pamela. Listen, I understand that you want 145000 okay? But there's a property. You know the property over there at 2106 Barton? Do you know where Barton Avenue is at? Yeah, Chris, I know where Barton's at. Okay, yeah, so look, that house over there at 2106 Barton, right, that one sold just in June for 116 You know, I don't know how I can pay you, you know, $145,000 uh, if, the, if the one right around the corner went for 116 right? So now I'm negotiating her down. I'm leveraging comps in, her, in the area that she is familiar with. This is two blocks away or a couple blocks away. So she's going to know uh, where Barton Avenue is at. All right. Now I'm looking at other comps. I see one right here for 255. I see another one just a couple doors down. All right. From here. They went for 310. Okay. Uh, here's another one for 236. And we got another one for 315. Now, what I know about this market, because I work this market, all right, and I've bought and sold flips in this market, all right, is that depending on how you rehab this house, the quality of the renovation is what's going to skew this back end number. This is a perfect example of why you do not need to concern yourself with it because, again, we don't know what somebody's doing to the property. So why would I come in and base my, my uh, sales price to an investor off of 236 or 350 It's, a, um, it's over $100,000 difference. All right. These are the same distance away on the same street. These are like this is a couple blocks away from each other. All right. So you got to understand things are worth what they're worth. All right. We don't need to get anybody else to, to convince us. We need to sell it to them for X amount of dollars. If that's the case, you can go be, get a job with for the rehab or working as a, uh, you know, somebody that brings property store or something. But, you know, I don't know about y'all, man, but I like making money. And uh, to be real, you ain't going to do that working with somebody else and making offers based on what they want you to make offers on. So uh, let me see if we got any other ones to look up. Well, I got you guys on. I'm not trying to keep you guys all day. Uh, let me see. Let me scroll through here. Guys, if you got questions before I hop off of here, go ahead and drop the questions in the uh, comment section as well so I can answer those uh, for you guys before we jump off of here. I want to make sure I get you guys' questions as well if you got any. All right, well, we got a, I got a few. I'm sorry. All right, let me go through a couple of these. All right, so I got one right here that is, uh, let's see. My man, John, Big John. What's up, man? Glad my man, John, is in here. All right, so uh, 4901 Eastover in Ryko. I know that area. It's a money area. I like, I like that area a lot. All right, 
So um, this is the east end of Richmond. Uh, it's a hot little pocket. If you're not marketing east end, uh, basically you ain't trying to make any money. So let's look at this deal. All right. So we've got uh, estimated value. We're starting the same spot, same process. All right. Hundred thousand dollars. So by an individual, it's a good thing. Small house built in 1948. It's only 688 square feet. It's a two one. All right. Um, I like two ones. A lot of people are going to tell you they don't like them. Uh, me personally, I like two ones a lot in our market. Um, they're great rentals um, and uh, they're great uh, quick little flips <clears throat> for like first time home buyers, that kind of thing. So I like them a lot. So here we go, right? Opportunity, estimated mortgage balance. All right, uh, 20,561. And guys, by the way, if you don't have PropStream, uh, I'm, I'm working on uh, working out a deal with PropStream to offer this group. Um, kind of a, a nice little discount, free trial, that kind of thing. Um, my boy Max has one uh, as well. Uh, we're going to tie it in with this. So um, sign up sign up for Prosher, guys, if you don't have it. It's $100 a month. Uh, it's got a free trial, but it's something you're really going to need. So look, we're looking at the opportunity mortgage balance. It's estimated at 20561 So we know what we're working against, all right? We know that the person's going to owe about twenty grand. If we want to make them some money, we want if they're if it's important to our seller, if our seller tells us they want to be able to make money, all right, then we know that we need to be able to uh, offer them more than twenty grand, right? So let's kind of look at so we get. We're going to check in that tax information. We see it's assessed at seventy five thousand. We see the mortgage got to know five. The loan was only twenty eight thousand. All right, so they right they they might have already paid this off. We don't know. That's that's over ten years ago, so they may have already paid it off. But at worst, they owe you know twenty thousand. All right. So let's go into the comps and kind of dig into it. So the, the deal is the same. We're starting at a quarter. So 0.25. You can you can do your comps this exact same way on MLS. By the way. Um, this little pocket, I love doing hotels in, in, in these little pockets on these two ones because in these markets like this, uh, these people let these go super cheap. Um, so I, I love wholesaling these uh, when they need work or even if they don't need work. These are perfect, perfect wholesales. So we're going to do our same process. All right. So 688 square feet. We're going to say 20%. All right, so our minimum is going to be 551. I'm going to go back in. We're going to do the same thing, 137 again. So we're going to add that. All right, we're going to do the same thing every time. All right, so this business is about being consistent and repetition. All right, it's just like I used to play sports. You got to get reps, okay? You only get reps by doing this, all right? Even when you're new, you should be taking every lead, regardless if it's a deal or not, and you should be practicing doing comps. What makes you a killer in this business and super effective is if you know how to comp properties and really, really dial it in, all right? Because there's going to be somebody you run into who doesn't. They haven't put in the work to know how to do comps and really work on putting comps together and figuring out how they work, knowing the city block by block. Those, and there's going to be people that don't make the money they should be making. And they're in that spot because they haven't done their due diligence and really gotten tight on comps, guys. All right, so look, we've got we've got two properties here. So <clears throat> we've got one. These are the exact same uh, properties, basically. And so I like these little pockets in, in the east end like this because the comps are so easy to pull because, you know, everything in the little pocket is all the same. So we see two comps, one for 55, one for 107. So we want to look at both of these and kind of see. Uh, what that might look like. So let's check it out. All right. So this one went for, uh, what did it sell for? All right. So it sold for 107. So this is probably went to an end buyer, we can assume. Uh, yeah. So Ashley Acres. All right. So it went to an end buyer. This is somebody, it looks like they got a grant also. All right. So I'm giving you guys a lot of game right now, man. I really am. So we see two uh, loans from the same lender on the same day. On a fixed rate mortgage. This is a gem. So I can tell that she bought this for 105, probably FHA, and she probably got down payment assistance on it for 
All right. So we can see that she now owes that 108. She just bought it. She's in a negative equity situation. We don't, you know, we just need her for a comp. All right. So there's no pictures. So that can't really help us in any way. So we'll jump off of that. We're going to look at this other one for 55. This is our as is comp. All right. All right, so when we check this one out, let's take a look. All right, so it looks like they got a reverse mortgage back in 2017. I know that it's a reverse mortgage because so I know the lender. All right, as you start looking at this type of information on your comps, again, putting in the work and being consistent, you're going to be able to know what's what without having additional details. All right, so I know who that lender is, so I know they do reverse mortgages or did reverse mortgages before they went out of business. So I know that's what the situation is. They got this in 2017. It's probably an elderly person, uh, and that's kind of where they're at. All right. So uh, we see uh, that just here recently, this is one of the properties that sold. It was sold for fifty-five thousand. All right. Uh, you know what? Let me go back. All right. So that one sold for fifty-five thousand. Okay. Now let's widen it out a little bit and see if there's anything different. Or more supporting comps. You see how we guys we just picked up more comps to support what we're trying to do. All right. So by looking at this, I'm going to safely assume my back end value is going to be anywhere from ninety five thousand from looking at these comps to a hundred and five thousand. All right. I'm not going to use this one right here. Okay. We're just going to work on the commonalities that we see. So we're going to work on these. Maybe worth a little bit more when it's fully fixed up. We'll have to dig in that a little bit deeper to kind of really figure that out. These are a little further out as we're getting down here. We always want to stay as tight in as possible, even when we kind of widen it up. All right, when you've got comps already at a quarter mile, when you widen it out to a half mile or 0.75, that kind of thing, you're not widening it out to try to increase the value. That's how you fucking lose money, okay? You're not widening it to increase what you think it's worth. You're just looking at the data. All right, because you're looking for trends, okay? So we've already got a tight comp right here. We've got a comp that we know went to an owner-occupant uh, with the FHA mortgage. So we can safely say it's worth fixed up about 107. And we can also say kind of as is in kind of decent shape, it's worth 55. Here's where you can wholetail these cheap properties and make a whole bunch of money, all right? Now, say this person owns it free and clear. Say they only owe 20000 on it. Now you can go to them and offer them the 20. That's a gap of $25,000 of profit right there. All right. You can pick that up, wholesale it, put it on the market, or you can pick it up and assign it to somebody for anywhere between that $25,000 you purchased it for, that $20,000 you purchased it for, and that $55,000, guys. All right. So you create your own profits. Not anywhere in this conversation looking at this property do we say anything about how much repairs it needs. Yada, 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 like we just talked about on the last deal, all right? Let me see if we got another one. All right, we got a bunch of them, so I'm just going to pick a couple more. Uh, let's do one out of Richmond. All right, so we're going to go through the same process, all right? So again, 123,000 estimated value. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't have bedroom count on here. 3,200 square feet built in 2008. This one might be tough to comp, so I'm going to do this one kind of not tough to comp, but it's a newer property, so um, maybe not be too much to it. So we'll jump through it kind of quick. Um, all right. So let's see. All right. So we see the estimated mortgage balance is roughly roughly based on this estimate. All right, fifty-five thousand dollars. All right, so we're gonna go in here. Uh, let's tighten it up. There may not be any when we tighten it up because we saw what half a mile was. So there's only one. All right. So this is built in two thousand seven. This one's built in eight. It's like six, seven hundred square feet uh, smaller. All right. But we can kind of reasonably say, look at that, right? So the estimated value in property says one twenty-three. Boom. We can see, well, here's our tightest comp, and that one went for 125. So that wasn't really far off on PropStream's part um, in terms of kind of giving us a value. So that's pretty good. All right, so I want to jump to that one real quick. Uh, let me go to uh, one or two more uh, before we get out of here. 
Um, let me see. All right, so Andrea asked a good question. How do you evaluate houses that will be a demo? All right. Um, I'll do a separate live on that. I've bought a lot of houses over the years and knocked them down and built new houses. So I'll do a separate live on that um, maybe next week. Uh, so we'll note that down. But in short, yes, you evaluate it based on the land. You evaluate it based on the cost of the property, how much it's going to take cost you to take down that property. Okay. So on a house under 3,000 square feet, it's not going to cost you more than 15,000 uh, to be able to remove that uh, uh, house from the property. All right. So you're going to add those costs together, and that's going to give you the cost of what your land would be. All right. So if that's 50,000 plus 15,000, that'd be $65,000 of land cost. All right. And then you just take that 65,000 and back into your ARV uh, from there. Most builders really quickly, most builders, you know, and I've built plenty of houses. Most builders want to be in a property for 10 to 15% of, of what the ARV is generally. All right. Um, let me see if there's anything else in here. <clears throat> and then we'll jump off of here. Let me see. All right, so Raul says, when you're wholesaling a property virtually, how do you get your buyer to agree on the purchase price when they want to know the repairs and you don't want to, you don't want buyer and seller to meet? All right, it's got a loaded question, Raul. I think it's a really good question. All right, so you have to explain to, and this is for everybody, you got to explain to your buyer that, <laughs> that you don't know <laughs> what the repairs are. And I'm laughing because it's such a dumb question when buyers ask this to us as wholesalers. All right. Hey, Raul, what do you, what do you think the, the cost is going to be to fix it up? Look, man, I don't know. You got to go, you got to go look at it. All right. I'm not a contractor. I'm a wholesaler. Right? I'm a real estate investor. I'm not a contractor. I don't swing any hammers. So look, man, I can't really tell you what the repairs are going to cost. If you want me to be honest with you, I can make something up. But what benefit would that have to either one of us? If you want to know what the property costs to fix it up, here's a lockbox code. Go take a look at it. All right. Figure out what it would cost you. If you want to go in there with your contractor team, you can access the property by going to, you know, 200 Dormont Drive. The lockbox code is 1111. You know, figure out what your costs are going to be. Figure out what your offer is based on your cost. And just bring me your offer amount. Look, I, I just don't want to mislead you. I don't want to feel like I'm giving you wrong information. Figure out the repairs by just going to the property and taking a look at it. Now, if the property is occupied, all right, Raul, which I think you're kind of saying here, if the property is occupied, all right, then you got to have some boots on the ground, in my opinion, all right? If your concern is, well, I don't want my buyer to backdoor me and go look at the property and it's a virtual deal. Now he's talking to the seller, yada, yada, yada. Now, you can do a memorandum of contracts, but that just delays you getting paid. So that's not always a beautiful thing, right? We want to get, we want to make money. We want to get paid. So I'd find some boots on the ground. A good website is uh, one called wegolook.com. All right. You can hire somebody on wegolook for a pretty small fee, get them to go out to a property for you, kind of at your instruction. Or you can utilize these groups. Uh, you can go in Max, Max Wells group. All right. He's got tons of people in there. Max is an awesome dude. Tons of great information. All right. You can go in Max's group and find somebody and get comfortable with them in your markets that you're virtual wholesaling in and either split your assignment fee with them. All right. Which is which is what I'd recommend or negotiate some sort of fee with them to deal with managing your buyer and your seller and getting them in the same room so that your buyer doesn't attempt to circumvent you. OK. Another another thing I would never tell my buyers um, that I'm working virtually. All right, I think that incentivizes them more, quite frankly, uh, to try to backdoor you. Because um, it's not like you're around the corner, you can pull up on them if they play if they playing games. All right, so uh, Raul, hopefully that answers your, your question there. I'm gonna check real quick to see if there's any other quick questions in the, uh, in the lot or in the comments. I don't see it, guys. If, if this was helpful for you, uh, I'll do more lives like this in the future. 
you know, I'm planning on going live a couple times a week. Um, if it's helpful, hit the love button, hit the like button so that I know. Um, and we can kind of keep helping you guys and get you information. And also, guys, so that we know this is helpful and, and you, we're getting you some good information, add some people into the group. I want everybody that's on here to go add 10 or 15 people or more into the group that you think can benefit from the information that we're kind of giving out uh, and that you think can benefit from doing deals in our state um, and kind of getting some of this information that we're going over. So, again, hit the like button, hit the love button. Um, invite everybody on here. I see there's like 20, 30 people on here, whatever it is. Go invite 10 or 15 people into the group, um, and we'll keep dropping gems and giving you guys game. I've been doing this 12 years. I love this business. Um, it's how I feed my family. It's how I feed myself. Like I said, I'm, I'm 12 years in the game. I'm not nobody special, all right? College dropout. I barely got out of high school. If I can do this shit, everybody on this live can do it. It's just all about getting the right information, understanding the information, and getting it away, get, getting the information in a way that you can really, truly understand it. But you can have all the information in the world, but if you don't go work and put in that work, and really, and really kind of hit it, you ain't going to make no money. That's why I always say, so feet don't eat. Y'all be good, and I will catch up with y'all. All right, peace.